Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Avernum 2 Crystal Souls. Uh, the sequel to Avernum 1, Escape from the Pit. Again, it's a remake of the original Avernum 2, which in turn is an, a remake of uh, Exile 2. And that's about all I know about this game. So I've never played this before, unlike Avernum 1. Even that I hardly remember past the very beginning of the game. So, yeah, this is going to be completely blind. I already looked at settings. Unfortunately, again, sound is... Uh, well, sound settings are very rudimentary. Um, you probably can't hear the title track at all. It also has stopped playing in the background right now. Because I've took so long here. Okay, well, it's... I mean, trust me, it's, it's pretty, ni pretty nice. Um, but you would have probably not heard much anyway. I hope these sound effects are not too distracting now. They tended to be a bit loud in the first game. Anyway, um, let's hop into a new game. Welcome to Avernum 2. I can't help but notice this uh, slit here. And a Nethel, actually. Wow. Okay. Huh, interesting. Uh -huh. Yep, so this, otherwise it looks very similar to the first game. Well, let's... Oh, right. Uh, new character type. Looks like the same set of classes from before. Actually, I'm what I might do this time around, I'm gonna probably just make custom characters. Now that I'm a bit a bit more familiar with the uh, you know the game system, which I don't assume has uh, really changed between the first game and this. I'm basically going to go with uh, the same party setup as, as the first game. That worked pretty well for me. I could go for more all-around characters, but... I don't know. I, I feel like two warriors, one more protective, one more... more roguish, maybe. Um, uh, although, maybe maybe I'm going to go for one character who is a bit more... Um, ranged weapon speci specialized, because... I always felt bad about really completely ignoring any any bows we found in any ranged weapon, ranged combat specific bonuses we, we came across in the first game. Hmm, I wonder. Yeah, but I still want want to have basically a priest and a, and a sorcerer type character that specialize in that respective school of spells. Maybe I'm gonna make the priest be uh, somewhat of a of an archer at the same time. We'll see how that works out. Hmm. As far as classes go, okay. So there are the three races, of course. Um, human get a, gets a bonus trait every four levels. A bonus trait every four levels, in addition to the normal trait you get every two levels, I assume. Level ten percent to missile damage and cold resistance. Okay. So I guess. If I'm going to make this guy my, my archer... Of course, I, I don't need to make him a, a Nephilim in the first place. And in fact, when I first noticed that there are slits in Nephilim, I wondered if I really wanted a Nephilim in my, or a Nephilim in my party at all. I mean, just trying to roleplay here. I guess ne Nephilim can be, can be decent people. Uh, the thing is that, that almost, almost all the Nephilim we met in the first game were hostile. I honestly have trouble coming up with a single friendly Nephil in the entire game. Uh, whereas we have met several very, very friendly uh, Sliths that seemed very decent. So I definitely want one of those at least. Maybe I'm gonna make my party leader a Slith. A Slith warrior? Dual wielding? Or actually, they he, he probably should be using a spear, shouldn't he? Hmm. Well, you know, I'm I'm gonna try to be not too racist <laughs> and actually take a Nephil with me. And I swear I'm not only doing it for the missile damage bonus. <clears throat> okay, so let's get extra spear damage. Okay, yeah, and fire resistance. Sure. I'm gonna make you a Slith. Huh. Um, you're gonna be human. You're gonna be human as well. Then you're gonna have a female mage this time around. Hmm. I actually kind of look like... Oh, goddammit, I pass it by. 
Can you go back? Oh, wait, you can. <laughs> Derp. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna... I actually like this, even though she's probably more supposed to be some kind of uh, priest character, you know, from her outfit, but I guess she she couldn't... she might as well be a, a wizard. Let's see here. I like the guy with the cape, even though he looks more spellcastery, but, you know, there's nothing... there's no rule stating that a warrior can't be wearing a cape like this, and a hood, specifically. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. I like it. Let's see. I actually do like the default male character, although... That said... Eh. Yeah, I mean, this this guy looks way too much like a... <laughs> like a typical ninja, and that just seems a little bit out of place. I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the uh, the default warrior here. Sure. Let's take him. Uh, the too bulky. This guy could work. Hmm. I mean, this one looks looks all right. Yeah, sure. Let's go with the default one. Um. Now I'll have to come up with some names, huh? Uh. Well, that's gonna take me some time. I'm gonna pause here and come try and come up with some decent names, and I'll see you then. Okay, this only took forever. <laughs> I mean, better to get this out of the way early. I mean, at, at what other point could you possibly get this out of the way? Uh, it's character creation. Obviously, it's gonna take a while. Um, but that's why I paused. So uh, we have Xaz, uh, a name that I took from my. Uh, recent off-camera playthrough of uh, Legend of Grimrock, where I had my, we had that as a, as the name for my, um, well, lizard folk character. Um, in that game, she was female, but you know, in this game, um, he's gonna be a guy. I guess the name can be can apply to either gender among uh, among lizards. Also, it's probably just some kind of uh, shortened form anyway, because. Uh, his real name would be unpronounceable for his team members. Uh, we have Svafnir, a name taken um, from. Well, originally it's a it's a name one of the names of uh, Odin from uh, Nordic mythology, and a name I've used before on uh, characters in World of Warcraft among other th games. Uh, we have Miri. Um, I was briefly considering a different name for her from uh, one of my favorite book series, but it's. That name would just not... First of all, it wouldn't fit her character portrait particularly well, even though it um, it wasn't... It is the name of a of a female magician. But it's just not as... I don't know, it just doesn't sound as good. Uh, Miri is from a different book, and in that game Miri is not a, a spellcaster at all, but, you know, good enough. And we have Ratantuo, um, called Atantuo by his friends, uh, because, you know, I was... At first, I was going to um, name my male fighter Atantuo after, you know, my usual avatar. But I actually uh, like playing uh, or giving that name to archer characters, so I guess that made more sense. And, I don't know, it, it, maybe it's a little bit tortured, but, you know, I guess it works. And I am going to play this game on hard. Unlike the first game, which I started on normal, which, uh, you know, made for a very relaxed uh, early game. But I feel that I might actually profit from, you know, being gently nudged in the in the right direction by the game um, via slaughtering me <laughs> if I as soon as I stray from the from the right path. Anyway, uh, we get some really nice artwork and some introduction. Avernum is the underworld. It is a series of hundreds of miles of caves far below the surface of the world. The land is kept alive and fruitful by powerful magic and the heat and energy of natural steam vents and hot springs. Avernum is also a nation. It is a land of people exiled from the surface world. The surface is ruled by the Empire, an all-powerful nation who disposed of unwanted people by banishing them to Avernum. Note the past tense, uh, past tense there. They formed a new nation far from the eyes of the Empire. Some, however, were not satisfied with the safety and peace. They wished vengeance. They sent a band of assassins to slay Hawthorne, cruel emperor of the Empire. The Empire was stunned. They realized that there was a den of vipers threatening their sole control of the globe. 
They had no other possible response. They invaded. Oh boy. Okay, more amazing artwork. The power of the Empire completely dwarfed that of the Evernites. But it had great difficulty teleporting troops to the underworld. The Empire arrogantly thought that Avernum could be subdued with a few hundred elite troops. Avernum also had the advantage of familiarity. They were used to living and fighting in caves. The Empire wasn't. The Empire soldiers were fought to a bloody standstill. Okay. The Empire sent more troops down, but the Evernites kept them at bay. The Empire grew frustrated and angry, and then it turned to terror and atrocity. And slowly it ground away at Avernum's defenses. Little by little, cave by cave, the invaders won victories against Avernum. Then when things looked like they couldn't get any worse, a new disaster occurred. Oh boy. <clears throat> Magical barriers appeared all over Avernum, splitting it into small sections and blocking all roads. Nobody knew who made these barriers. Maybe the Empire, maybe not. Just as the barriers appeared, you arrived at your first posting. You have just joined the army of Avernum, eager to join the good fight. Okay, so we're not outcasts or wanderers in this game, but soldiers, okay. Your dreams of heroism were short-lived. You were sent to Fort Ganric, a tiny unfinished outpost in the far northeast corner of Avernum. Okay, far northeast. Well, certainly there wasn't a place called Fort Ganric before. I also don't know if this takes place in the same area at all. I guess we're going to see how familiar the world map looks. Uh, you dream of great victories, of deeds that turn the tide and save your homeland. Instead, you reported to Captain uh, Vidikan and were put to work digging out storerooms. Fort Ganric isn't ready to warfare. For warfare. Yet. Each morning you wake up in a damp cave, looking forward to a long day of shovels and picks. Hey, shovels and picks. That's nice. I'll make sure to, to take some of those along, just in case uh, I need them for a quest. It's hard to imagine anything that could happen which could enable you to strike a mighty blow against the Empire. Hmm. Well, we'll see. All right, here we are. Uh, okay, the interface looks cleaner. We still have the same limited number of quick slots, but oh well. Also, since I uh, chose custom characters, oh, okay, this is different. Hmm. No longer we see the. Do we see the grid, or rather, I guess we do as soon as we enter combat. Yeah. Hmm. Actually. Settings. Hmm. Wasn't there an option to always display um, the combat grid everywhere? Hmm. I think that was. But not anymore. Okay. Anyway, uh, I am going to customize my characters. I guess I'm going to do that off camera as well, just because it's probably going to take some time. Um, obviously, since I picked custom characters, I'll have to uh, assign all points manually, which is the entire point, of course. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot cleaner. They do, did keep these, uh, well, some call them goofy. I, I call them charming, uh, little illustrations. Actually, adding a few new ones? I don't remember seeing this one. Or these. Yeah, I guess all the ones with sliffs and um, Nephilim in them are new. Okay, anyway, I am going to pause again and uh, take care of point distribution. And yeah, see you in a second. Okay, I'm done. I already arranged my first starting spells. And the, the only items we start with are, uh, well, the usual... Dagger, leather armor, and a single healing potion. I think that's exactly the same as the first game. Now, as for the spells I chose for my characters, or the spells, uh, the skills I chose, I put uh, two points in strength, one, one point in endurance for both my fighters. Um, I gave him pull weapons because obviously the Slith is going to use spears. Well, I mean, probably not exclusively spears if we come across any halberd types, uh, type weapons that are better. I also gave uh, gave him cave lore. I guess he's gonna be our uh, most well versed in, in cave lore, which I feel makes sense for Slith. I mean, it, it makes sense for everyone because we're all natives of Avernum, of course. But 
you know. I also gave my fighters luck. I kind of want, you know, it's, it's probably not super useful. Or it might be super powerful, I don't know. It could go either way, but uh, I just want all my characters have to have some luck eventually. Just, you know, if for no other reason than role-playing. I also chose uh, Sure Hand because, you know, it might not be that useful in the long run. Towards the end, we're probably gonna we're probably gonna max out our hit chance. I mean, we definitely will, as we did in the first game. But early on, it's gonna come come in quite handy. I feel. Uh, pick the same thing for him. Same stats as I said. Uh, he's gonna be again um, our rogue-ish dual wielding character, very much the same as uh, Tantua from the first game. Um, so he's gonna have our tool use. He also has some luck, and he specializes in swords, and will eventually go. Dual wielding and lethal blowing, all that stuff. Um, for him, well, I, he's kind of our hybrid. I figured, you know, um, our mage was basically our main damage dealer in the first game, so I want, I want my mage in this game to be uh, focusing on that as well. Uh, whereas our priest, I mean, um, our priest or priestess, I guess, uh, I guess she technically was a shaman. I guess that's what she started out as in the first game. Ended up. Um, Using quite a bit of damage and uh, damaging spells uh, toward the end of the game, uh, but she also c constantly ran out of mana. So I figured, you know, uh, having a another way to attack while focusing her spellcasting mostly on support and healing, um, or his in this case, might actually work out pretty well. So I started him with a bit more dexterity and a bit lower intelligence, um, so that he can use his bows somewhat effectively early on. Uh, two points in bows, two points in priest spells, and one in arcane lore. Because, you know, obviously I want a certain level of that uh, over uh, between my two spellcasters, just so I don't have to pass by any spell tomes, hopefully. I'm also, I also want some first aid eventually, and of course, well, basically all of this. Uh, spellcraft, sure. Resistance, less so. But uh, magical efficiency, I definitely want eventually, and I gave him Dead Eye again, same with the, as with the fi fighters to help him hit enemies early on. Uh, she got elemental focus. She got all her points in intelligence, full on glass cannon mode. Um, no weapon skills at all. Uh, two points in mage spells, and yeah, a couple points here. And elemental focus, as you saw. Yeah, uh, so. This is our starting party, or this is our party. So we'll see how these guys fare. Uh, there is a blanket that could be useful, but I guess not really for adventurers like us. And here we are. The game actually starts for good. Uh, for, for good? For real now. Uh, you stumble groggily out of the cave that has been your unwilling home for several weeks. Your muscles are still sore from yesterday's digging. You've been working on these storage tunnels for weeks. You notice that the gate to the north is closed. Most Evernights have learned to resist claustrophobia, but seeing your lone route out of the exit, uh, your lone route to the exit, closed off, makes you nervous. You can see Maxine on the other side. Maybe she knows what is happening. Before you proceed further, however, you should protect your head with a helmet. Two crude helms of thick lizard skin wait for you on the table nearby. You should take advantage of them before you move on. Okay. Right. Stand near the helmets. Oh, what? Wait, I don't see the helmets actually. But I guess they are there. Poor leather helmet. Oh, poor leather helmet. Wait, <laughs> okay, that was not the right character. I still had her selected. Sorry, that was a mistake. Thankfully, quickly shuffling items around still works the same as in the first game. That's really appreciated. Yeah, I, oh, I guess they must have been in the middle on this table. I was looking at this, which is probably more like a bench. I don't know, is it just me, or do the graphics look a bit more high-res? Huh, I don't know. Hello, Maxine. Who got her own portrait? I guess she's, ex she's important, then. You look through the gate and see Maxine, hard at work. She's a skilled stoneworker sent to Avernum not long before the Empire invaded. Her skin still shows a tiny remnant of color from being in the sun. She's behind the closed gate, fixing stone blocks in the frame with mortar. She nods and smiles when she sees you. Sorry, trapped you in there. Won't be long. At least, you can dig uninterrupted. Okay, well. Uh, I mean, we probably know some things about her already, but... 
Obviously, I don't. She laughs. I'm not a big soldier like you. Just another unfortunate who said the wrong thing, got the wrong man angry, and sent and was sent down here. Yeah, uh, big soldiers like us, huh? On digging duty. So much for that. Um, what did you say to get sent down here? She frowns and suddenly becomes very distracted by her bucket of mortar. In Avernum, asking how you got sent into the underworld is poor manners. Okay, so that still hasn't changed. Why did you come out to Fort Genrik? I had to help out somewhere, and I had skills to use. This fort needs to be finished. Once I was down here, your war against the Empire became your war against the Empire became my war. Right. Uh have you heard anything about the barriers? Just rumors. Most likely meaningless. The barriers are still everywhere, blocking the roads to the rest of Avernum. The wizards can't do anything about them. We are in horrible trouble. Hmm, so this must be different from the barriers in the first game then. Or maybe they're just too high level. Hmm. Uh, what's happening out in the fort? Don't know. Probably just building. I stay down here so that I don't get any news. It's just upsetting. Okay, fair enough. What's happening with the gate? I just need to close it for a, mu for a few minutes to place this frame. Won't be long. Hmm. <sighs> okay, fine. Take your time. Oh, it won't be long. Why don't you go do your digging? Looks like you only have a few more years to f <laughs> a few more years of it to go. She returns to her work. How encouraging. All right then. Uh, the lizard skin helm is crude and dirty. Oh, <laughs> okay. I guess I should have taken a step in between putting those helmets on and talking to her. Uh, the lizard skin helmets are crude and dirty, but it, they will pr uh, keep falling stones from uh, cracking your precious skull bones. You look with regret at the door to the south. Time to start digging. Hmm. Or is it? You enter the room you've spent several weeks expanding. Your worn tools wait on the floor, promising exhausting hours of chipping away at one of Avernum's unending walls. However, things do not go as planned. As you enter the cave, the ground shakes under your feet, slightly at first, then harder. It doesn't feel like one of Avernum's many cave quakes. No, this is more local. And then you hear cracking stone and a cloud of dust pours out of the, post uh, out of the passage to the south. Then you hear the chattering of shrill voices. Something has dug its way into your fort. You're about to enter combat mode. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, what I didn't do is check battle disciplines that I might have learned. What? Oh, I have no battle disciplines. Interesting. Um, and it doesn't even give me the list until I... Oh, that's interesting. I mean, it does give me this list, so at least I can look at requirements for upcoming spells. Which are mostly the same. Actually, I have not looked at these before. Um, judging by the symbols, most of them look familiar, except for Capture Soul and Simulacrum. Huh. Freeze a spirit of target creature in your spirit prison. Um, excuse me? <laughs> That's new. I guess we're going to be um, properly introduced to this mechanic at some point. Huh. Summons a copy of a creature in your spirit prison. That does not seem to replace the standard summoning spells, though. Huh. Yeah, other than that, it seems like the same set. I mean, the specifics might have changed here and there. Damage numbers and other numbers, which I probably wouldn't uh, really notice anyway. So, there's that. Priest spells. There's, there must be something new as well. Move mountains. <laughs> okay. I assume not literally. In combat makes rocks fall on foes. Outside of combat breaks crack walls and stone pillars. Okay. In town mode, not in combat, destroys nearby fragile stone. So, similar to um, dispel barriers in functionality, I guess. Divine host, restoration, retribution, return life. Sanctification ritual. Uh, in combat, blesses and cures... Uh, your group outside combat sanctifies nearby evil altars. Uh, evil altars. Okay. Huh. I guess we will come across more of those. Previously, our only options at, at evil altars were usually to desecrate them, slash uh, pry all the valuable gems out of them, and thus invoking the <laughs> the anger of whatever deity the altar was uh, sanctified to. Yeah, it looks like everyone got... Uh, well, both priests and sorcerers get two new spells each. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate that we can't look at the battle disciplines at all, but, you know, since apparently we don't have enough points to use them anyway, 
that hardly matters. Okay, I was going to pick up this stuff. Just, you know, it would be funny if uh, if this game actually had another quest like the first one, but, you know, you never know. Also, uh, shoes might actually be useful during these very, very early stages of the game. I'm also already keeping my eyes peeled for hidden switches, which I haven't seen yet. Gob oh, I did not see these goblins here. They are very well disguised. Camouflaged. Okay. Uh-huh. To attack this foe, select the space it is standing in. You are now in combat. Characters will take turns moving and attacking. Each turn, you get a few action points. Everything you do, moving, using items, attacking, costs action points. When you run out, your turn is over. To attack a foe, select the space it's standing in. Hopefully that's going to work a bit better than it did in the first game. That's the one the one change I really hope for. If they change nothing else, then hopefully the targeting of, of tiles is going to be a little bit more precise and intuitive. Um, right. Will be tinted red. Okay, at least that's more visible than it was in the first game. That's already helping. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I could I could swear. I'm, I'm not crazy, right? The first game had an option where you could just display the entire combat grid and not just the portions highlighted around friendly and enemy units. Oh well. Okay, <laughs> that was not great. Even though we have a 90% hit chance, apparently. There we go. Uh, well, I guess we might as well play it safe and use our buffs. I guess I should have activated this earlier. There we go. Hmm. Actually, I could give um, the dagger of one of these guys to uh, uh, to Svafnir. Although he's probably... Uh, actually, I, I kind of want to see how that affects his hit chance. Okay. Gotta... Uh, we got a proc f um, of workers from our Cloak of Curses, so that's useful. Um, and also, there's a shield lying around here. I guess we might as well give this to our warrior who's not going to dual wield, even though he's going to use 200 weapons eventually. Well, let's uh, use that. Okay, nice. Mm-hmm, I know. Uh, why don't we try dazing, dazing these guys? Sure. Might as well. All right. Of course. Oh. Can you use this? Can you not? Oh, can't change armor when a foe is nearby. Interesting. No. So no weapon swapping. Or oh, actually, weapon swapping might be okay. Just not armor swapping. And I guess in this case, a shield counts as armor. You know what? Um, I think. Well, I guess we'll have to wait. Although, I guess I can can see it here. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like targeting tiles is easier, although uh, the real test is obviously only going to be once we are once we have a whole bunch of enemies, how easy it's going to be to select uh, an empty tile close to them in the middle of a, of a group of enemies. But now it seems like it's more precise than, than it used to be. Very nice. Well then, put on this. Yeah, both weapons will be less effective. Hmm. We'll see. Uh, we should have um, with only one weapon. We should have a ninety percent hit chance against this guy. Okay, and it's reduced to two times sixty-seven, which is you know ultimately amounts to more to a better hit chance than with just one attack, if that makes sense. But we probably also deal reduced damage. We're going to become better before long, so I'm not too worried. Oh, uh, never mind. I thought that cleaved and damaged the other one, but it didn't. Can you... Oh, I cannot attack without a weapon at all. Good to know. Oh, in that case. Uh, actually, okay. Fight is on the uh, fight. Fight is over now. 
I'm gonna give this dagger to you, so you have a weapon to attack with, for the time being. I also have more stuff. Give me that. Um, hmm. I guess I can give you a throwing weapon, for the time being. Isn't there something else? Oh, right, the shield. Forgot about that. Got some loot. Um, or, we have a little bit of a message first. Goblins are a perpetual pest in the underworld. Simple-minded, violent, enthusiastic breeders. It's far from the first time you have had to fight them. However, they are very disorganized. It looks like they have been working on digging this little tunnel for weeks. Goblins never engage in such a sustained project unless someone much more powerful forces them. Okay. You suddenly have a very bad feeling. You need to walk out to the main fort and let them, uh, let them know what is happening. Right. Yes. Already did that. Uh, well, I guess I'm gonna pick up some healing items during these early game stages. Oh, there really isn't anything else here. Okay. And the door is now open. Uh, Maxine is gone. Unsurprisingly, the dead goblins were not the only threat. The sounds of battle echo from the north. Happily, Maxine managed to get the gate open so you can uh, reach the carnage mu that much more quickly. Something terrible is happening. As you approach the gate, a wall to the east collapses. A goblin head timidly pokes out of the wreckage, looking for victims. When he sees you, he ducks back and calls gleefully to his fellows. Okay. So we're not ha not safe here at all. Hello. Okay, one of those attacks missed. I mean, ultimately it's it's probably more eff more efficient right now to only be using a single weapon, but screw that. Nice. Uh, and combat. Oh, there are still a few more. But we're gonna wait for them out here, where we can fight them two at a time, or well, two of us at a time. Protection. Wait, I could have fireballed, actually. Well, right now we don't have any reason to really conserve our mana here. What do these spells cost, by the way? Uh, only one! Oh, okay. I thought it started out at a higher cost in the first game and went down as we put more levels into it? Or more levels into spellcasting or something? Hmm. Oh, I did not see you there. You are a warrior. But you don't seem much more dangerous. Yeah, this one is still more expensive. And you missed, okay. There we go, nice crit. Didn't drop anything. You left a chest here, interestingly. Yeah, you check those. With a fireball only costing a single point of spell energy, there's really no use, no need for her to have a backup ranged weapon. Um, oh, right. Wow. I completely... Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot that this is actually where we started the game. And this, this opened. I see. Yeah, of course, this was the gate that used to be closed. Hello, Maxine. Are you... fine? Maxine has dropped her tools and is wandering around dazed, not sure what is happening. You remember that she isn't a soldier, just a stonemason, trapped in a terrible sp in a terrible place. She looks at you. What? What is happening? Are we being attacked? Uh, sure sounds like it. It's just goblins, not a problem. I mean, at least down here. But I heard more fighting toward the exit. It can't just be goblins, can it? I don't know, maybe it's lots of goblins? Hmm. Oh boy. Maybe the Empire has come for us at last. Uh, I would rather say something encouraging, since she does seem to be terrified. She should leave these tunnels? Honestly, she should probably stay down here. We don't know what's upstairs, but down here it's, it's only goblins. Yeah. Um, just stay here. Alright, that seems safest. But what, what if more of them tunnel out? I don't know what to do. She crouches and buries her face in their hands. Oh. Uh. Yeah, I mean, she probably should come with us. We could protect her. But I guess that's not really an option. 
Hmm. Hmm. The storeroom... Uh, this storeroom is a large natural cave you discovered while digging passages in the rock behind the fort. Finding it was a huge relief. You saved... Uh, it saved you a lot of work. The passage down to the rest of the fort is to the north. Down to the rest? Oh. I was expecting up. Uh, save my game, yes. You're right, you're right, game. I've done that a couple of times, but I should definitely do that more often. You hear shouting and running to the north, and then two Evernight soldiers run into the storeroom in a panic. They are new arrivals like you, green enough to be terrified of the goblins that are chasing them. If you say so. I don't see them yet. Oh, there you are. Well then. Got, uh... Just goblins and a flinger? Oh, actually, no. We have a warrior. Oop. Big buff again, and try to daze all of you. Okay, that worked on most of them. Let's try finishing off this guy. I could also summon a just, you know. Just for fun. Well, call beast in this case. And this beast uh, turned out to be a skeleton. Well. And really, we missed the gazed one. Uh, the gazed, the dazed one. <sighs> Seven damage. Yeah. Can we switch places with the skeleton? We cannot. Wow. Ten point crit. Okay, I was gonna say, um, didn't get experience, but no. Since it is our own summon creature, I guess we should. Oh, you can't reach in a situation like this. So the AI is unable to walk through allies like this. But you can do it automatically. Uh, thanks. How to use items? Yeah, I know. Uh, you have reached the completed storerooms and are pleased to find that some of the supplies are still here. Considering how little the castle sent out here, even before the various block travel, this is a stroke of luck. One healing potion sits on the table in the alcove to the south, waiting for some lucky warrior to claim it. To use a potion of... Yep, okay. Well, I mean, we are in absolutely no need of any healing for now. I mean, our skeleton is a different story, but, you know. How to fight? I... I kind of know how to fight. You see a bow and javelins on the table to the north. They are crude and heavily used, perhaps date, uh, dating to the earliest days of Avernum. When you attack an enemy, you will use your default weapon. This can be a melee weapon, sword or spear, or a missile weapon, javelin or, or bow. Right. Well, I'll gladly take the bow. After I take these things. Oh, actually... Oh, crude short sword. Yeah, you get that one. Or can be sold. You get the bow, placing these javelins, which still cannot be sold. Uh, I guess I am, I'm gonna give them to her as a backup. Okay. So far everything is very familiar from the first game. Which is a good thing, I suppose. Bag of meal. Huh. Again, I'm gonna pick that up just in case it's a, a quest item. A belt. Sure, let's spread around this basic equipment a little bit. Can we talk to you guys at all? Probably not. Oh, you speak with one of the young soldiers. His Evernight skin, already pale from years in the underworld, has faded to a sickly white. He has never been in battle when the bloodthirsty humanoids started flooding into the keep. You are able to learn little of value. Apparently, as grim as things look up here, uh, things are worse down in the main fort. He muttered something about cat people. Oh. Well, I mean... We know all about cat people, don't we? Okay. 
And our water supply here. Oh, there's a cat person. Horarum. Are you friendly, though? Probably not. The stairs down to the rest of Fort Genrik are to the south, but they're guarded. You see the foes waiting to ambush you, and you immediately realize who is behind the assault. The goblins here are led by a Nephil warrior. The Nephilim are a race of fierce, clannish feline, uh, feline? feline warriors. The Empire has slaughtered most of their number, sending a few survivors down to Avernum. Of late, the Evernites have made peace with some of their clans, but others remain determined to get revenge on humanity. This large hunter snarls and hisses when he sees you. Brrr, it is luck. Human prey for Horarum of the Fang Clan. Easy prey. Eh, well, maybe you haven't noticed the Slith and your fellow, uh, your fellow Nephil. <laughs> Where are you from? Really? Small talk? Friendly conversation? In a situation like this? Hmm, you're not with the Empire? Horarum spits on the stone floor. Empire! Empire is great enemy. When we take these caves, we make ready. Ready for vengeance on Empire when they come here. We destroy all and gnaw their bones. Nephilim! What? Oh, Nephilim beating the Empire? Seems unlikely. Huh. In fact, if they're a common enemy of the Empire, why do we need to fight? So pointless. Where are you from? Our, our mighty castle in the caves. Humans here neglected too long. Now Fenklan is strong and ready to take these lands. You remember hearing the other soldiers passing on rumors about Nephilim sightings to the east. Maybe those should have been taken more seriously. You think I'm easy prey? Warriors of this fort are drags. They run when we come. We hunt you all and take fort for our own. First victory for Fenklan. <laughs> How about this? Leave now and you can live. Eh... You can have the fort, just let me go. I mean, it's not my fort. I don't I don't know how attached we are to this place in particular. Um honestly our our specific memories of this place aren't super fun, right? So in a way <laughs> I guess we would be okay with this. Except that of course he's not going to accept. Uh so yeah. One way or another, your assault ends here, my friend. Horarum is eager for battle. He leaps ahead of the goblins, blade out and teeth bared. Well, that's it is. Actually, Xaz is missing some health, but he also has two of the potions, so that's fine. Okay, nice. Do seem to have the same hit chances uh, against him as the normal goblins, so that's nice. Definitely go with the shield chant. How long does it last? Four turns. Good enough. Okay, we dazed three of the goblins. That helps. I wonder if I should kill the one. Uh, we already started killing Horarum, and he actually seems to be going down just fine. Um, well, I wonder if I should play it safe and heal Xaz. Nah, not yet. Some new help. Hey, a wolf. Much better. Dire wolf, even. Nice. I wonder if I really should get rid of the of the offhand weapon for now. Hmm. His mana is getting low. Actually, both their mana is getting low. But this also looks like it's going to be. Well, actually, we don't know if this is going to be the last fight of this tutorial section. Horarum falls to the ground. Wow, that's the first achievement. <laughs> achievement unlocked. The ambush. Hmm. Uh, falls to the ground dead. He is far from the first to fatally underestimate the warriors of Avernum, especially us. Uh, you open the leather satchel hanging from his belt. Inside it you find two scrolls. One of them is inscribed with magical runes. The other looks like a map. Interesting. You set the map aside, hoping to read it when the chaos has died down. To read the map, use it in your inventory. Okay. First of all, though, we have some enemies to deal with. Of course, I completely forgot that we have a bow now, which I should make use of. Okay, the goblins are waking up. Maybe I should daze them again. Then again, though, they're really not that dangerous. Right, I also meant to do this. There's some stuff on the ground that I'm gonna worry about later. Oh, wow, yeah. I think that's better. At least for now. Missed. Okay. Well, 
I should probably heal next turn. Yeah, you know, just to be on the safe side. You missed again, wow. Nice. Uh, the door to the east is held shut by a padlock. That explains why goblins haven't looted it yet. If you pick the lock, you might be able to take advantage of Fort Genrick's limited supplies. Right? I hope my two tool use are enough for that. First of all, we'll have to deal with this remaining enemy. Nice one. Okay, let's see. Uh, leather pants. Yes. Silver necklace. I'm good for selling. Hmm. Oh wow, a chainmail vest. Yes. That does reduce hit chance by 5%, but I think we still want this, even early on. Nephilim map. Right, we can use this. Uh, Goth. Okay, this is a crude Nephilim map of the nearby caves. It seems to show a castle and a cavern not far from, not far to the north of it. I thought to the east. Hmm. Uh, castle and a cavern. Not far to the north of it. The word Gath. Or maybe... Oh, actually, this this probably is to the east of where we are. Hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, I've not looked at the world map yet. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Oh, this is the invaded territory. Okay. Uh, the general layout is the same. As should be expected. I mean, no major geological shifts uh, could have happened. Okay, the unexplored tunnels are no longer unexplored. They're just remote now. Which makes sense. Darmon, Castle, Patrick's Tower, Almaria. Fort Emerald, Blosk, and uh, Fort Saffron. These places are all still the same. Tower of Magi, Mertis. Silvar, Fort Dovna, Fort Avernum is no longer on the map. I guess because it's really kind of minor. Uh, Kotra has been destroyed, looks like. Kotra Ruin. I mean, Kotra and Silvar were... I don't know, they always felt a little bit redundant in the first game. Two towns very close to each other in the very same region. So I guess it's... Uh, from a from a gameplay perspective, it makes sense to only have Silvar here. And Kotra turn into a slightly more interesting place, maybe. Uh, Fort Renlon is still there. Fort Melo is there. Fort Draco. Oh, and apparently our newly built fort, or fort still under construction, is very close to Fort Draco. Huh. Uh, Castle Freehold is not on the map. Wait, is it here or here? Uh, I think it was here... actually... Yeah, I think it was here. Maybe it still is. We haven't heard anything about Cass or his Freehold in the introduction texts. Burning Reaches... Barga... So basically the Abyss has fallen to the Empire. And not much else. Huh. I guess the the, uh, the people of the Abyss were also a lot less organized than the main nation of Avernum, so in that sense it, it's not, su not too surprising that this area would have fallen to the Empire. Maybe they, they'll have a lot more trouble against the actual kingdom of Avernum. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, anyway. Yeah, that is that. What else do we have? Oh, we can keep looking at that if we want to. Radiate Eyes. I should probably not hold on to this this kind of item for as long as I did in the first game, to the point where they became completely useless. I guess it still makes sense to have that on my uh, fighters, who are going to be in the middle of enemies. Okay, what else is here? Well, we have this door we can pick. Oh, difficulty 3? Really? How close are we to leveling up? Not very close at all. Well, I guess uh, time to start a new list. Oh, I don't. I didn't prepare. Uh, okay. There's some kind of kind of paper here. Eh. Yeah, just some random mail from my um, ISP that is no longer useful. So uh, we have a locked. Or actually, um, yeah, I'm gonna go with location first, so... Uh, Fort, whatchamacallit? 
Actually, what is this place called again? Um, Ford something something. Something with G. Um, locked door. Three. <clears throat> okay. That's probably the beginning of a very, very long list, if the game is, if the first game is any indication. Okay. There's gotta be, gotta be more stuff. Uh, well, obviously there is. Group heal. Yes. I guess I'm gonna give this to my priest. Oh, and we get our first spear. Awesome. That is a two-handed weapon, as I figured, so, yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, the trade-off is... I could have I could have one warrior if I'm going with two warriors and which I am. I could have one warrior with a who specializes in swords and also uses shields and the other one using uh two-handed weapons, spears and halberds. So that way I I could make use of both types of main types of melee weapons and also use shields, you know. But then again, I guess I can give magical type shields or lighter shields to my spellcasters and still have to get some use out of them. But, well, since I really want to, to have a dual wielder, because, you know, it's just so cool to dual wield, even if it's not uh, very functional. Yeah, I guess. In this game, I, while I will be uh, actually using the, the two-handed weapons that I find, I won't be using most of the shields. That's just a trade-off. At last... Ah, Genric. Okay, I should probably <laughs> fix this on my map here, uh, my list here. Genric. And also, probably just memorize that name. Even though, like Fort of Vernum in the first game, it's probably not going to play that much of a role later in the game. We'll see. At last you have found the path down to Fort Genric. The sounds of battle are still audible ahead, and you cannot tell whether the humans or Nephilim are winning. You take a moment to rest, and then you ready your weapons. Perhaps a few additional swords on the Evernight side can turn the tide of the battle. Okay. Oh, I did actually... Uh, rest. That is really generous. I was slightly worried about the combat continuing without... with us having spent a good amount of our spell points. You run out into the main body of Fort Genric. Sure enough, the Nephilim found a way to infiltrate the fort and attack. Two of them are to the west, sneaking behind the barracks. When they see that you have spotted them, they charge. In the courtyard to the south, you can see guards fighting other Nephilim. Happily, it appears that your team is getting the best of the invaders. I mean, it definitely is now that we appeared on the scene. Oh, we have a new enemy model here. No, enemy sprite. Cool. <laughs> and this uh, warrior and Nephil just standing next to each other. As if they're just having a casual conversation or something. Okay, Spiritist uh, needs to go. There we go. Well, you can't do much but attack. What's that? Lizard. Okay. Um... Uh, well, I guess we start off with buffing again. Oh, we also... Wait, is this no longer... What? This was act deactivated earlier. It only... It didn't really occur to me back then, but... I activated this once, and it should have... Yeah, lasts until you... Lasts until you return to a town, or cast a different cloak spell, which... Neither of which I did, up to now. Maybe I'm crazy, and it was active until that forced rest up there. No. Kill it. I'm tempted to actually throw in some spells to kill these guys. To snatch the experience. I mean, I could do that. Oh no! God damn it. <laughs> wow, we are also taking some damage here. Maybe I shouldn't be taking things too lightly. Oh well. Um. Okay, that thing is dead. Oh wow, this guy is not very tanky. But we definitely need to heal Saz. And... Maybe crit and kill it? 
No. You probably only help the soldiers to to kill it. Oh yeah. That's dead. Well, rip extra experience. Oh wow, that guy died very much. He's very, very dead. More shovels? I mean the previously uh, the previous game had only asked for three items for those quests. So uh, am I going to to assume that this that this uh, the same is true in this game? I guess so. Uh, a rank smell emanates from the narrow space behind the guest quarters. This is where the fort uh, piles its trash before it gets burned or thrown over the wall to form another heap. <laughs> Oops, that's the wrong button. An eerie quiet falls over the fort. All of the Nephil and Goblin attackers have fallen. Okay. The soldiers look at each other, clearly shaken. After months of fearing an attack by the Empire, a humanoid raid was the last thing they were expecting. You realize that Captain Vidikan will want a rapid report about the state of things in the caves above. Perhaps she will even find a job for you more fulfilling than manning a shovel. I mean, we performed pretty well, didn't we? Hey, guys. Okay, let's see here. The barracks. Okay. Soldier. Storerooms. Captain's office. Okay. Guest quarters, right? As the game already told us. Oh, got some rats. Oh, sure, I can deal with a giant rat or two. Oh, didn't quite reach. Maybe I should have tried taking them. Fifteen damage. Wow, the spear is really powerful. Alright, nothing else. No buttons? Unless buttons... I mean, buttons might look very different than they did in the first game, which uh, could throw me off quite a bit. Okay. Even though this is our fort... It's still considered stealing from other people. I guess that makes sense. Oh. I guess it makes sense also that uh, going upstairs would lead to this level. Just didn't expect it. Oh, okay, that's a difficulty 5. Although the contents are probably also considered stealing, so... Just... 5. Bag of coal. Well, that looks like something that might be required by some quest or another, so I'm gonna not put that into my selling bag for now. Also, you know, just because we're not gonna heal after combat, that's what our healer is for, after all. Who are you, Gridley? Actually, you know what, uh, since we're at 58 minutes, I think I'm going to make a cut here. This should serve nicely as, a, as an introduction, as a first episode for this new Let's Play. Um, we met our new characters, our new team for this game. We got introduced to the story and we had our first couple of fights. Uh, so next time we're going to start with a, more, with a bit more peaceful um, town exploration, or fort exploration in this case going to talk to our commander and see uh, what she has to say, how appreciative she is of our of our combat performance and whatnot. So yeah, for the time being, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.